Michelle Mallon with the Fred's Kitchen, and today we have a very special guest for our New England viewers, Pierre Genyac of Provence Restaurant in Maine. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, just uh, very close to Kennebunkport. Oh, okay. People are a little more familiar with that. What's the name of the town? It's Ogunquit. Ogunquit. Okay. means beautiful place by the sea. Really? Well, that yeah, sounds like a beautiful place. I don't know if it's a myth place. or a truth, but... Okay, well, uh, yeah. we're going to say it's the truth today. Yeah. So what are we going to be making? I see a piece um, of fish. Yeah, wonderful. Well, we do Provençal cuisine in our restaurant, uh, simple dishes, sort of a blend of French and Italian. Ooh, nice. Uh, flavorful, uh, fresh, uh, nice uh, ingredients. Uh, we have a nice red sea bream mm -hmm. from New Zealand, actually. And what type uh, of fish is that? Is it white or flake? What can you compare it it's, to? It's uh, very similar to um, American snapper, oh. which uh, goes very well with the, all the other ingredients we have. Here today. I see some saffron. Um, saffron, coriander mm -hmm. seed, um, fennel bulb, um, Great. potatoes and tomatoes. So and what can we fish. do? Let's get started. Well, um, we have to fillet the fish I guess first? Or? Yeah we will but we'll start right away in the stew. Excellent. Because it takes a few minutes to cook and uh, we have to render some of the, this is smoked apple with bacon and we have to render that and uh, so I'll cut that right away and uh, if you want, you can turn that pan on and mm -hmm. we'll let, let it warm. So like a medium? Yeah. It's about okay. right. And we're going to cut this into a um, lardon shape, which is uh, a cube, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a French term for it. So, do you want me to do that for you? Like, sure, you okay. can do that. Great. Do you want yeah. both pieces done? Both pieces. No problem. And uh, throw them in the pan. Okay. And uh, we're going to render it till it's slightly colored. Okay. And uh, remove the bacon out. Can I put this in the pan? Yeah, okay, go right great. ahead. All of it? Yeah. Actually, you know what? This will probably be enough. Not enough? Yeah. Okay. Since we're cooking for two. Great. Perfect. And then the water is actually boiling back there. Let's throw this in. Mm-hmm. I'll just put these in here. I'll just take them in. And this fish has been... Uh, Obviously, uh, I, I gutted it myself and scaled it, but... I'm glad fish, you did that first. I did. <laughs> the fish, yeah, there's tremendous scales on this thing. Um, the fish market, will they'll do all that for you. Right. I mean, uh, they'll fillet the whole thing for you if you'd like. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I just thought I'd, I'd do it here for to, to show there's no real mystery to it. No? Just a little scale. And uh, like I was saying, American snapper is, is wonderful this way as well. Or um, a black sea bass. Uh, okay. White flesh, you know, flaky... Tasty meat is more very of a good lighter fish than like a swordfish type of a fish. Right? Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. So we're gonna cu cut right behind the gill here. Mm -hmm. This is where the head starts. Um, so you don't lose too much flesh. You want to cut on a slight angle. Oh, I see. Try to go as far as you like can. Follow the line that's almost there. Yeah, there's almost this natural line. I see. Just go sideways like this, like that. You could do the same thing on the other side. All right. See? Yep, lots of fat came off of there. A little bit, not too much. There we go. Take this out. Now we're going to remove all the extra fat. Mm -hmm. These are cool enough. Okay, would you like me to peel them for you? Yes, you can do that. Sure. I'll bring them over. No problem. Are we slicing them or dicing them? Or? Well, we're just going to peel them and cut them in two and see them. Oh. Lengthwise, um, but I'm gonna start on that stew right away. It really just peels right off very easily. Yeah, yeah, if you don't it do does. it long enough, it, it becomes a little hard to get the skin off. Yeah, it depends on the ripeness too. The tomato, obviously. Uh, so this is perfect. It's on medium. And this and is just a little onion. A little bit of onion. Just a white onion. Yeah, Spanish, preferably. Spanish. Not a medallion <laughs> nice or anything. Sweet. Nice and sweet. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pour, it needs a little more fat now, even though we've, we've left a little bit. We're gonna add some olive oil. Okay. So you were basically just flavoring the bottom of the pan. Well, you're rendering the, ba the, the, the you're fat. You're gonna use the, the, bacon? the bacon? Oh yes, we will. Oh, we'll we will. add it okay. on later. But the smokiness of that bacon could be overpowering over the rest of the ingredients. So I see. You, uh, you want to add it on a little later into the recipe.
one and then I'll do the rest for you. Okay. Well, you want to remove the little core here? Yeah, that part doesn't taste very good, does no, it? It's no. not big. But cut them in half. Mm -hmm. And these, um, these romas here don't have too many seeds in them. No. But you just brush them off like that. The tip Are you here keeping the center intact? Or? Yeah, oh, okay. leave it intact. It'll keep the structure. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a stewing dish, so um, they won't be in there very long, but uh, you don't want them to fall apart. Right. So. These are pretty tender. Yes, they are. Okay. There you go. And if you want to do the rest, sure. move these aside. That's it, and just, you don't want them sliced? No, just, just like that. Is. Sure. Yeah. So the onions are moving right along. Great. And uh, I'm going to add some garlic to this. Minced garlic? Chopped, chopped garlic? Okay. Finely chopped. Nice and easy. While you're doing that, why don't you tell me a little bit about your restaurant? Well, uh, we specialize in Southern French, uh, which I was saying as, to me as a, a special uh, meaning because I, I did a lot of Italian cooking in my past in French. Love Italian and so French. I, so I thought both. combining the two together would be fun. I think that's and great. Sort of get the best of both worlds. Yeah, and it's a very, uh, you know, like Tuscan and Provence, very trendy sort of areas for people to, to travel. And uh, they, they, they love that style of food, very light, a lot of olive oil and fresh herbs. And, mm -hmm. Simple. Uh, simple. Um, simple desserts, um, um, good fresh ingredients. Great. And uh, I'm going to add some uh, crushed uh, coriander seed. Mm -hmm which is uh, not used very often, but... A lot of Asian cooking, I think, you yeah. a lot of coriander, it's which is basically cilantro seed. I mean, yeah. Asian cooking, it's called coriander, but we call it cilantro. Yeah, exactly. We've got some fresh uh, cilantro in here, actually. Actually, cilantro is one of my favorite herbs. It's nice, very versatile. Mm -hmm. This is one of the oldest uh, spice, actually, in the recorded history. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't know 5, that. 5,000 years old, so... So a little bit of this goes a long way. Right. It's you got don't a lot need of flavor. Much. Well, of course, anything dried yeah. is much more is much start... stronger than anything fresh anyway. Yeah. You don't want the garlic to, 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 to color. Burn. Yeah. yeah it's, it it's, it's bitter. Very bitter. I have the cook it too much. Bouquet garni here. Which, mm -hmm. uh, and what do you have in there? It's uh, sprigs of thyme, uh, parsley sprigs, and uh, bay leaves. And what's it wrapped in? A leek? Uh, leeks, yeah. Just That's wrap nice it around like this. It. Yeah. Or you could do a cheesecloth, I guess. Cheesecloth. And in this case, um, I think uh, it's, it's better. Uh, the, the, the twine uh, won't give out too much flavor like a cheesecloth would. Okay. <laughs> this quick prep. Now, when it's you a have quick a preparation, so. When you have a tomato where you don't see the seeds, you need to almost I dig in there or it. just leave that I big? I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so we're all done here then. Okay. I have, um, how about a Pinot Grigio? That's fine, yeah. That That's well? dry. Okay. Excellent. And this, I'll show you which way. We just want to make wedges out of this. Okay. Excuse me. One moment. Yeah. Um, Fennel's so nice. I, I don't think a lot of people know. Fennel is very much like of a licorice taste to it. Yeah. And it's that sort of flavor. And uh, very versatile, again, uh, can be. Um, sliced raw into a mayonnaise, mm -hmm. making a slaw or a... Even like shaved real thin in a salad. Exactly. Like, I love it like cooked that. Cooked in many different ways, gratin, I grew boiled. I eating that. Uh, My mother cooked fennel in everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very accessible now, so there's no excuses. No. Just right, cut them like in uh, basically sure. each half and quarter. Okay. And you can put them directly into the uh, st stew. Excellent. Here's your wine. Thank you. Nice and chilled. You could have a glass if you like as well. <laughs> Not quite yet. It's sweet. Maybe we'll have it with it's the sweet. fish. Yeah. Right, so our stew's cooking really nicely. Yep. We have our fennel, our saffron, a little tomato paste. Exactly. Okay, white so just wine. let that simmer. Oh, and some white wine. White wine and a little bit of chicken stock. Okay. Uh, is nice. It's not uh, a fishy overpowering. You could use that, a fish fumet, all. but that would great. be enough. It would be very meaty. So how long would you cook That'll take this about uh, 10 minutes okay. to cook. Great. So you really want the 
flavors to incorporate and you want it to simmer down a bit. Yeah, but not to be overdone. You want the, uh, a little crunch on the fennel. Oh, which still, is nice. okay. Yeah. Great. And, and uh, I'll show potatoes. you the cut. There's some, uh, we call them pomme fondante in French. They're just uh, braised potato and a generous amount of butter. So, surprisingly. I always like that. Surprisingly. Yes. Um, French are not known for low calorie cooking, yeah. <laughs> right? It's not going to happen. No, that's fine, Marie. Um, so, at the restaurant, obviously, we turn potatoes like this. Oh, so is you're going to make it look it's like very, it's a, a little potato. Yeah, it's sort of going to take the shape of the fennel ball. I see. And the Roma tomato as well. So, right, we'll so be able to display sort of all similar. that. But I don't expect you to do it exactly like this. Is that like pomme potere? Pomme, they call it pomme chateau, actually. Pomme chateau? Yeah, just like this. Very and pretty. And it's very pretty. But whatever the closest you can get it to. <laughs> okay, so you want me to try. You can try. I'll give it a shot. And then I'll turn on this pan and you can put them right in there in the frying we'll, pan. We'll put them in with some unsalted butter. Unsalted butter. I see. And a little bit of seasoning. Okay. And we'll be all set. That takes about five minutes to go. Et voila. Got and you butter. need, I would assume a, a very sharp knife is a yes, good thing do. here. Yes, you do. I was risking of uh, cutting yourself with dull knives, huh? Yes, that can be you a problem. You want that in there. And uh, we're gonna let that melt slowly. Put the potatoes right in there with a little bit of salt pepper. You cover it and we'll let it simmer like that. Okay, how many of these would you like? Uh, you can do uh, four pieces. Okay. And I'm gonna go right along with the fish here. Great. Uh, under the gill, like that. As I've done on the other side, we're going to chop the head off. That's the part you can do. You can always save this for a, a fish fumé later on. I'll put that right here. Mm. So you could basically save all of that for a stock. Yes, you could. Any Bones white, and everything, right? Yeah, any most white fish will make a nice fumé. You just follow the bones here, basically the backbone, cutting through the side bones. Mm -hmm. And the fillet comes right off. Oh. Um, here we're gonna remove the ribs, basically. Following the ribs. Just follow the rib line? Yeah, the rib line like this. I'm boning a chicken right there. Then That's a nice fillet. This, these fish fillet, these uh, two fillet fish have uh, always a little pin bones there. So Which you, need you to can pull those out with a pair of pliers. You can, yes, if that's something that's available or tweezers. Am I doing this the right way? Close. Yeah. Okay. It's close. We're just getting smaller because I'm trying <laughs> to get them pretty, so yeah. I keep shaving more. Seven sides to a potato. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not my potatoes. <laughs> I don't know. I can pull these out. Uh, oh, you can pull them out by your hands. Yeah, you can use a paper towel. Um, depending on the fish, some of them are rugged. Obviously. Right. So some you might need a pl like a plier. Yeah, pliers for or okay. needle nose. Mm -hmm. um, but this is working. I don't want to damage the fish too much either. Right. And I guess sometimes the uh, you, you got to compromise and leave the fillet. So you really shouldn't get a bone in your fish when you're out to a restaurant these days. Well, nowadays people don't enjoy having these, and uh, for the price they're paying, you should be, you should be uh, bone remo free. Bone free. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How's that? Not bad. That's Not pretty real good, smooth, you know. But okay. I get yeah. a C plus? Yeah, just put them right in the pan. Okay. I almost got them all. And I guess because they're so small that they'll cook a lot faster. Yeah, they will. That Perfect. Is a, a lot of Let's give them a little bit of pepper. Turn it up just a little Turn bit Turn that more. up, yeah. Okay, I'm on medium now. And uh, we have a little bit of sea salt here. Got to be careful with that sea salt. Powerful. Yes. Coarse sea salt? It is, is yes. Using? Okay. Yeah. And there you go. Let's get let's get it going. Great. And we're gonna do our fish in the pan? Yes, we are. Excellent. This one right there, which we're gonna turn This is the one thing that I'm a little intimidated by cooking it. And well my husband loves fish and I just really don't make fish very well. So I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing how you do this. Well, it's uh it's difficult, but this it looks great. A lot of people just simply overcook it. Is that what? Mm -hmm. And they uh, they don't appreciate the, the true flavor of fish. I find it hard to give fish flavor. Really? Yes. 
Hmm. I can cook a great piece of meat, pasta, yeah. chicken, but fish is just, I don't know, it's not my forte. Really, yeah? Up so quickly. It, it will shrink up uh, in, in the first time and it will relax again. Oh, I see. Sometimes uh, you'll see people uh, scoring uh, fish fillet skin. Yes, like you but, do a foie gras. Uh, yeah, but in this case, uh, it's going to relax again. So, a little bit of sea salt again. Not too much. It's good. And then we're going to. So the sauce is really what's going to be giving the fish, I guess, the flavor here. It's not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because this fish has a lot of flavor already. It's it's very flavorful. Okay. Very meaty. Um, nice in the fall and the winter, I think. Oh, not really a good summer fish, or. Well, on a yeah, with uh, a nice strong vinegar uh, on a salad, absolutely. Are we looking to get these a little golden? Is that where we are? Yeah, exactly. Looks that's like, okay, that's so beautiful. Keep those going. You All keep right. them covered. You don't have to worry. There's a good amount of butter. And I was just uh, feeling the, the 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 fennel ball there, mm -hmm. and you see how tender it is. You right. just have to uh, to go through it, and that means it's basically cooked. Okay. So that's done. I'm gonna throw these tomatoes that we peeled earlier. Okay. So this moment. Just enough to... And they're soft enough, so they don't really need to be cooked down. They'd fall apart if you were cooking them the whole exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. Put them in there. Just drop them in. Yep. It's going to warm them up just enough. Okay. I'm going to chop a little bit of Italian parsley here to flavor our potatoes. The flat leaf, not the curly parsley. Exactly. Mm hmm And um, we're going to add this to the potatoes afterwards. Oh, okay. They're probably almost done. I love done. parsley potatoes. If you want to fill the potatoes the same way, if they're done. A little bit more. A little bit more? Well, this one's, yeah, this bigger one. Not too long, no? Needs a little bit of time. No. All right. Basically, okay. right now, it's it's nicely colored on the skin side. Mm -hmm. Put it in the oven. And let it finish. Let it finish like that. Or you could this just... This side up. You wouldn't This side it. up. Right. Just leaving it like this. So you, you actually don't... The meat itself doesn't get damaged by too much heat. Okay. In this case, we're gonna, just going to turn it so over. Putting... Great color, just nice like golden that. brown. And uh, we can cover this, and it'll cook even faster, actually. Oh, it will? Yes, it will. Steam is going to help it stay could, moist. Okay. Could, could you put, put butter in there as well? You could, but it doesn't need it, okay. really. Um, you've got enough fat in there. You don't need to add You don't butter. need to add okay. butter. And do we have some wine with this? Today? Yeah, yes. we have a nice uh, okay. Bandol Rosé, which we feature the... at the restaurant. Correct? Yes, it's a wonderful Bandol. It's very dry. Perfect uh, with fish. Perfect with this fish. And it's extraordinary. Great. Right. Well, I will pour us a glass. That sounds great. Well, that's really pretty. It's very colorful. Yeah, well, the uh, tomato paste and the uh, saffron. Gives it that nice orangey glow. It's crunchy. Some of the bacon. I know there's a lot of bacon lovers out there. Yes. Well, there's a lot of vegetarians a lot. Do you find that in your restaurant that you have a lot yes. of vegetarians? Yes. Yeah, more and more actually. It's, and is uh, that? Um, it's pretty easy for them to order off the menu nowadays. I would assume there's plenty of fish dishes. Yeah, definitely. That's great. These potatoes are done. Excellent. And display those around the fish. I think I turned them up a little more than you may have wanted. Well, it's not so bad. Okay. It's got a nice uh, crispy skin I on it. I like a crispy skin. Do you? Yes. <laughs> of course, the maniac here. about clean plates. Well, that's I what think happens that's important to you. even when you're home. It's sure. You want to eat off a pretty yeah. plate. Let's look at this. Oh, wow. It's cooking nicely, isn't it? Okay, I just want to... smells wonderful. Yeah. Well, we're going to turn it back on the skin side. And I know it's hot, mm. but the fish is firm. The flesh is firm. It's cooked. So that's a good way to test. Yeah, it? it's definitely cooked yeah. long enough. And uh, let's turn this off. Okay, here, let me get this out of your way. Sure. Excuse me. Thank you. You're welcome. Skin side up. 
again for uh, aesthetic. Yeah, I think that is an attractive way to serve a piece of fish. It's very classic in the presentation. Do you like to eat the skin? Some people eat the skin. Some people Absolutely. don't care for the skin. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it should be eaten. I would think a lot it's of the nutrients wonderful. are in the skin. It's crispy along the side. It's moist in the middle. And you can garnish this with some of the fennel fronds that came with the bulb. Oh, sure. sure. You could always prepare them and, so I guess, soak them in water if you'd like. Yeah, if Keep it's nice, nice and, and fresh. fresh. Yeah, paper towel, wet paper towel is nice. Keep them in the cooler. And we got some cilantro. Cilantro, yes. Yes. Love cilantro. A couple of sprigs, and et voila. Let's try nice this. Nice glass of wine. Nice rosé. Yes. Very good. Oh, you go for it. Okay, please. thank you. Looks great. You get a little bit of everything here. Well, I don't know if I could fit all that in my mouth. <laughs> I'll have to go back for more. One piece at a time. That's it's fun. a big portion, actually. It's a very it big is. portion. It is. I was generous. Well, that's nice, because I'm a hungry girl. Yeah, but if you're going to do one course, get rid of dessert and appetizer. Mmm. How is it? Nice? Oh, it's excellent. And I, I love stewed fennel, and it sort of has that comfort cabbage finish to it, you know? It's stewed really nice cabbage. when the fennel's cooked down a bit. It's much smoother. Mm. Let's try. Fish. And the fish, did you try the fish as well? Yes, no, I tried the fish. Yeah, the fish is very wonderful. Moist. Very good. And the wine smells great. Bon appetit. Thank you. Mm. Cheers. Cook something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of the Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts.